regular YouTube viewers, Rectangular here for the Triple C Podcast. Really quick, I wanted to just give you guys a heads up that in this episode we talk about figures that we now know more information about. So, like for the third wave of Captain America Marvel Legends, I mentioned Tigra, which now it does not look like we are going to be getting her Instead of getting Tigra and King Cobra, we're getting Eel. And then also we talked about the Wolverine in the upcoming X-Men wave. And at the time we didn't know which version of Wolverine. Now we know that we're getting the brown suit Wolverine. So uh, in case there's any kind of confusion, um, you know, we're not uh, we're not drunk. This was uh, before even uh, Captain America: Civil War came out. So, anyway, with that, let's head into the episode. Finally, the DMC has come back to the Triple C podcast, <laughs> or the cranky Coochie Crew, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm Rectangular, you are the DMC, we have Michael Wisman and Punker Mike. Welcome our guest, Henry Beltran, to the podcast. Hey, guys. Yeah, the world, world, famous, applause here. <laughs> world famous Henry Beltran. We need sound effects over here. <laughs> oh, well, there goes my light, so... That was that was a nice that was a nice crash. <laughs> I'll just I'll fix it later. But um, yeah, we've been uh, wanting to get Henry on for a while. I know he's been uh, super busy, especially with um, photo combat going on right now. So uh, thanks so much for coming on. For sure, guys. Happy to be here. Well, I'm not I'm not busy anymore. <laughs> nice are, you, are you not uh, in it anymore? No, no, no. I only made it to round three. But, uh, you know, it's all good. Cool. Don't say only. Don't that's, cry about it. That's, uh, it. Still, it's still an accomplishment. It's not uh, nothing to, to laugh about. No, it's still good, you know. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all about competing. If you don't compete, you just sit back and you're not going to learn anything. you got to go yeah. in and see what you can get, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. You're right uh, in it to win it. <laughs> winning is good, but, you know, participating is good, too. Yeah. Has your, your, if you if you win it's an extra bit. If you don't you still get the, the all the experience. Mm-hmm. For sure. Was your brother entered? I don't know, Diego did he? I had to take him out. <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> I had to take him out. Yeah, he went in. Yeah, I haven't really. I haven't been. I've been too busy to to keep up with all of you guys, uh, all your entries. So, apologize if I haven't uh, hit like on your picture. Yeah, I've been waiting, dude. I'm like, why doesn't Todd like my picture? Is it something, <laughs> is it something I did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've been uh, you've been messing with those uh, with those biters down in uh, uh, what's it called, the um, Frankensons. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna ask you. I saw I saw Adrian um, post a picture of. I'm assuming it was Frankenstein's where he saw the uh, the Namor and the other the tar- Target exclusive two pack. Oh yeah, earlier today. Yeah, that's cool. So we should probably be seeing those while uh, the podcast is already gonna air by the time they show up in stores, but probably in about three weeks. Yeah, hopefully, because I've been seeing a lot of people with it already. Right? Yeah, that. They're out already. They're in the. They got to be in the stock rooms. All the scalpers at Frank's have connects at all the stores, so well, they got to be in the back room. I'm not too sure about that. I think that they might have uh, contacts over in uh, Hong Kong. Mm, I don't think so. They're not that legit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> they get over there. Frank and Sons is a um, a, a hive of scum. And villainy oh. that, you, that you have never seen before. <laughs> love it though. Yeah, gotta... it's not. It's a lot nicer though. Now I have to admit, it's so much nicer than before. Oh yeah, 
I remember back before they even had like good air conditioning. I'd go in there and you'd have to like time how long you oh, were in yeah. the booth because that shit was hot and stinky. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'd, I'd walk around for like twenty minutes and then be like, "All right, let's go hang outside for a little while." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go back inside. It still gets pretty hot though. Yeah. And pretty stinky too. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, uh, especially during the summer. You don't want to be there. No man, <laughs> sealed in there with everybody. Whew. I'm so jealous because uh, every time I've been down to SoCal, it's never been um, on a Saturday when I can actually go there. So I've never been. You should go. We need to go. We need to go. Yeah. I know. I mean, we need to. We need to just have a, a huge ACB. You know what? We need to have a convention. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. Like just, you're talking about, like renting a place out and inviting everybody, or what? Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool, you know, get a, um, a space, like at a, uh, a hotel, you know, like a, um, what's it called, um, like one of those meeting rooms. Like a banquet, a banquet and room. we can do, yeah, yeah. And we could do like live ACBA, you know what I mean? That'd be tight. Nah, no, Punker yeah. Mike, hook it up, we're gonna do it inside of Costco. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a, a place that's... I mean, usually to rent those banker rooms, it's usually like 500 bucks or something like that. Everybody pitch in. Whew. Yeah, what's the ticket yeah, price now? <laughs> yeah, that's totally do. I mean, if there's 50 of us and it's 10 bucks, that covers the, the, you know, the rental right there. That's not a big deal. It's free to get in Frankincense, right? Yeah. 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 You just got to kill somebody for parking. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he that was bad. I actually you do? took 20 minutes one time to meet up with you guys. I said, remember I, want, I told you, uh, Mike, I was, I was driving around for like 20 minutes, half an hour, and I almost said, fuck it, I almost went home. Yeah, that shit gets <laughs> I rough. Was so, I was getting so pissed. I was like, oh, I'm about to go home. That shit what, gets you do, what you do is you park you know, a mile away or, or wherever you can find parking, and then you just Uber over to Frankenstein's. Sure. <laughs> That's, maybe I should do that next time. Yeah, five, you save, save yeah. yourself. You know, it probably cost you five bucks, but um, you know, at least you you're not wasting all your time driving around and wasting gas. And yep. Yes. Sure. So um, we Henry, um, gonna ask you. You know, op, or, you know, one of the main reasons that we have in you on is, uh, and what you're most known for is being uh, an amazing <laughs> dynamic builder. Oh. What's that? I thought you uh, because I was known for being a super cool guy. Well, you are. <laughs> you know Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. and I don't know if you if you watched um, our episode with uh, Chris Serda, but he he was most excited to meet you and your brother if he ever comes out to California. And we were saying, yeah, yeah, yeah Henry. Not only are they really talented guys, they're some of the nicest guys in the community that we. I, I think I missed like only like the last 10, 15 minutes. Oh but, really? Yeah, I, I didn't hear none of that. Was it that <laughs> the last, at the end or what? Yeah, I guess I don't remember exactly, yeah, but. Yeah, uh, but uh, what was it? It was like two hours and a half, right, or something like that? An hour and a half? Probably yeah. two and a half hours, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I think I missed like maybe like twenty minutes. But it was at the end already. But yeah, it was a, it was pretty entertaining. Sounds like a cool cat to kick it with. Yeah, Chris is a really cool guy. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, he can make it out here. Um, so, what um, what's part of your uh, diorama building process uh, as far as either um, designing or building or um, the actual like selling or shipping the whole process? What what do you find them to be the most challenging part of it? The more challenging part, it will. Hmm, that was a tough one. Uh, I guess just coming up with a new idea all the time, especially when I don't know if I'm lucky or what, but uh, every time they they tell me they want a commission, mm -hmm. uh, most of the time they'll just tell me to do whatever I want to do. You know, they'll just tell me, oh, you know what, I want a sci-fi style diorama, and they don't give me any type of idea. I had to come up with the whole thing by myself. I got to do the research. And I guess that's, in a part, I think it's good because I can do whatever I want. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's I think that's one of the most challenging parts of making 
the dioramas. Because uh, sometimes I get stuck a little bit. I'll be I'll be like researching and see what looks a little bit better. Like like anything, you know, you gotta see if it looks good or not. You sometimes I feel I uh, I'll make a part and I see if it works, and if it doesn't, I'll go ahead and start all over again. If I'm not satisfied, if it was for me, I would. I know I, that's the way I would do. You know, I don't like to make something and it's like halfway ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that's that's about it. And everything else, I think uh, that shipping is pretty good. Uh, the painting part as well, the cutting, finding boards here in LA is cause it's, it's been a little hard these days. The uh, installation mm -hmm. board. Yeah. Yeah, it's been kind of hard. Yeah, uh, from what I understand, not every area of the country has the same stuff because of, bu of building codes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some like obviously a really cold place like uh, upstate New York or something like that, they're going to have a lot more of the thick foam. Whereas yeah. Southern California, you're going to be limited to, you know, they'll probably only carry the, the thinner, um, like yeah. half inch. Well, my, yeah. Michael told me that uh, they only carry the one inch board here because of uh, like building um, standards or whatever. Mm -hmm. the, the one I've been looking for is that the half inch one that you see a lot of people get. It's like that huge ass sheet that people have to cut down to put in their car. They don't yeah. sell that in California. They do. Mm -hmm. They do? Yeah. I just I just got one. Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> I will tell you where it's at, but I can't. Yeah, uh, tell them offline. Yeah. I, I was like, Damn, I've been looking for that because it's a lot easier to cut since it's only like a half an inch. I told I told you last time how to do it. Just go on um, on Home Depot the, on the on the website and Google it and search it, and it'll tell you what store has it. And just because I did it in a couple of stores and I went there and they're like, uh, no, the website's wrong. And I'm like, you really? <laughs> That's how I normally get mine. Because I don't really use that one. I use a, that uh, that one inch two by two. Uh -huh. It's really rare for me to get the big one. And when I looked for it, I I picked up two of them. And both of the times I did it the way I told you. Because that one's that one's thinner than the other one, right? Yeah, but it works for for other stuff though. Like I, I wouldn't make a complete dial off of that. Cause I just think it's too thin. But for some, st but you can use yeah, it for a couple walls or something like that. For sidewalks and uh, yeah. like, I'm gonna do a frame for your um, sci-fi door or something. That's why I want it. And it, it, it comes in handy too. Like to build little things, like furniture and all that. Mm. You know, I live in Northern California. It's a lot colder up here, so uh, I have. I don't remember the thickness, but yeah, those big sheets. Um, I want to say right. I can't remember if it's half inch or it's an inch thick. It might be two inch. It's there's there's uh, one inch and there's two inch. Okay. I think there's even four inch. Am I right? What's that? I think there's even four inch. I know there's a one inch. Yeah. And there's a two inch, and I'm not too sure, but I think there's a four inch too. But I'm not I'm not sure about that one. Four inch. You can make like a fucking surfboard out of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the two inch is pretty. It's pretty thick too. You can't use that. Um. So if uh, if you had unlimited time and money to work on a diorama, or um, or if you wanted to see somebody make something, um, what would what would it be? Like if I would make it, or someone else would make it? Well, let's say if if you wanted to make something and it, you had unlimited time and money to make it. Something that I've been wanting to make is uh, like a like a mini city. Like uh, a couple of buildings, two, three-story buildings. Okay. But like ball out with a road in the middle, a few buildings on the side. Maybe like I said, three or four buildings. Uh, I might, I might be interested in making something like that, like something really big to work with all. And just for for me though, <laughs> not to sell it for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I just got done earlier today watching um, JJ Kramer. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I think that's... Yeah, he did that, uh, I guess he lives in Fargo, North Dakota, and he did the uh, the movie theater there, and it was huge. Yeah. And uh, I guess he um, he auctioned it off for charity, and uh, I don't know I don't know how much he got, you know, how much it sold for, but uh, that thing was, like, as big as my desk. 
and um, yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, you don't see too many people go, you know, going crazy like that. Is he the same one, the same guy building something on dial structure that is looks like humongous as well? That has like a door on the side, and then all the way on the other side has another door with stairwell and all that. I think so. I don't yeah, know. I'm, I'm not saying, but I think it's, I think it's big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't have the that, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't build something like that. That's too, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. I have them here that I'm that I have them for commissions, they're always uh, in my way. They I gotta take them apart, put them away, bring them back out, and it's, it's a mess. Yeah, um, Michael, where'd you go? <laughs> he took off. Race. Bunker Mike, are you frozen? Am I frozen? <laughs> yeah, you you were frozen on the screen there. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, I right, what did I miss? The whole episode, dude. It's yeah, over. It's already. Oh man! Have you busted through all the questions, dude? Yeah. But uh, I know you had some questions for uh, for Henry. All right. So. Considering that uh, you know you have brown to hazel eyes, what type of you know foundation would you recommend to complement my features? And uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was looking. I was gonna go into it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Camera just cuts away. You cut back full. You know, full get up. All right. So what you wanna do? Um, well, I don't know what uh, they already asked you, but what I was mainly just going to talk about was um, how, because, like, the area that you live in, you know, you're real close to a lot of um, the Southern California guys, and you and your brother both collect and do different things, and, like, so many people are kind of spread out, and they really wish, you know, they could, like, hang out and stuff, so I just wanted to ask how, you know, how does it feel that... Uh, Basically, you know, any day of the week you could meet up with um, people around you and also, like, how you and your brother will collaborate on different things. Like, what? how does that make you feel as a collector and a display artist? Well, I, I think it's pretty cool. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys seen, um, with, with me and uh, Adrian and uh, Fabio, we've been uh, kicking it a lot. We go to the mm -hmm. book shop, we do displays there and all that, and... Uh, it's, it's pretty good. They, we we could do a lot of stuff. Hey, and um, talking about my brother, they we could go up and um, go to Frankincense and all that. And basically, I'll get something for him. He'll get something for me. And it, it's it's really good, especially because if uh, he's out there basically hunting, he could get something for me and versa versa. Same thing with uh, with Fabio. I don't know if you guys um um. So last time when uh, when the Nick Furies went uh, on on um, in Hasbro, mm -hmm. I uh, I texted him real quick that uh, they were up and he was able to get some because yeah, I had to text me about that. I don't know. I heard they did. <laughs> Here you go. I heard they did. No one told me. No well, one I told have, me. I have Fabio's number. No we got I'll give it. I'll give it in the air right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was yep, going to see how yeah, pretty, pretty cool, you know. Um, yeah, I was going to say uh, it'd be it'd be so nice if uh, if I lived close to you guys because it's not most of the time, you know. If I if I see something um, that, that Michael needs, I'll try to um, to hook it up for him. But it's you know we always have to pay for shipping, so it'd be yeah. nice if we if we lived in the same area, you know, we could just say I'll oh, I'll just come over and drop it off or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shipping sucks, dude. especially if you want to pay retail. Nobody wants to pay for the shipping, yeah. <laughs> right? It's just, especially if it's a like a regular figure that you're just trying to get, you're not gonna pay extra four dollars just to get it to your house or something. Yeah, I was gonna say also to um to, going be able to, to meet up, meet up, and you know work on displays together. That that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, it is. We um. Me and um, Diego doesn't want to do it, but uh, we've been telling him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I can get some time, shit. I, 
We're lucky right. enough to get Diego on the podcast, so don't feel bad. Hey, <laughs> I need like at least like two weeks, a two week notice, so I, <laughs> so I can you know find babysitter and this that, and the other thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's why. Do as soon as you can. What are you gonna do, right? Henry, how many kids do you have again? Five kids. Wow. Uh, okay. That, nice. They're for sale too. Huh? They're for sale too. If anyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sale, trade. trade. Or... Whatever you guys want to do. Trade. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what you guys got. <laughs> what about you guys? See, see, Henry owns his own business, so he's got to put them to work. You know, when they get pulled. Yeah. Out. <laughs> Gotta make sure uh, they they uh they're able to uh, carry it on. It's Got a right. whole dial factory out there. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? Do you guys have any kids? I got seven. <laughs> I got a big dog. That's about it. A cat dog or a cat? Uh, no, a cat dog. I wish. No, <laughs> just a, now I'm allergic to cats. But uh, no, just a dog. Just a dog. Uh, my. Daughter just turned 13 a little while ago. She lives up in Seattle with her mother. Oh, okay. That's cool. And Diego has three. Three. Yeah. Diego's got 30 by the sounds of it, man. Yeah, I know. Whew. It feels like it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, two of them uh, were on the podcast at one time. <laughs> they should be popped in, yeah. And they're like, come on, Dad, let's play. It's like, no. Get off of there. Yeah, Diego's like, hold on, fill in for me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coincidentally, talking about, um, like, local uh, meetups and stuff, today uh, Josh Cheney swung by here to drop off a Vegeta figure for me because he had ordered, like, extra and asked if I needed one, so I just canceled my pre-order and got it off him, but... Yeah, that was pretty sweet, like, just being able to, you know, like, get a figure like that, uh, you were saying, Todd. And he actually brought a friend um, with him that I didn't know before who collects, like, other stuff, so it was dope meeting him, too. Now you know who's so, scooping up all the figures when you're uh, when you're at home. <laughs> yeah, just Josh and all his friends are out fucking mobbing here. And I go to the store the next day. Man, Target doesn't have anything. That's right. Um, well, no, I, I'd be more worried if uh, your brother Adrian was here because sometimes he'll message me like, hey, do you need this? And he just finds everything, man. Like he finds, like yeah. before those uh, yeah, does. Walgreens Vaders came out, he found that, Venom, Spider-Gwen. Yeah, Adrian, I feel like Adrian just lives in the streets, man. He's just always out there. When he goes out, he's always he hits like three Toys R Us, a Walmart, and a Target. He's he's crazy like man. that. I like I like to do it, but uh, I I don't know. How many kids does Adrian get it? Does Adrian have kids mm -hmm. too? Yeah. Yeah, they're all at the other end of yeah, well, Toys R Us. He's, he's got them spread now. Yeah, we're Mexican. We have to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's the law. It's the law, man. Yes, sir. So, um, let's see. Uh, of all the dioramas that you've made, um, which one are you most proud of or the, had the most fun making? Fun? Uh, none of them. Uh, proud? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're paying the they're paying the butt. Wah, wah. Um, maybe the the Arkham one. I really like that one. And um, what else did I do? I can't remember. I think just, I think just that one. Like really, really proud of it is just that one. Oh, and the one that I did with the rafters. I really like that one too. Yeah, that yeah that's what I was gonna one. say. That rafter yeah. one. Was cool. yeah. yeah. That rafter one. Would you say that, that one was, was the terrible. hardest one to let go? Like out of all the ones you made that you're like, oh, I'm here. I'm no, I'm not here. I have them here for for so long that when <laughs> I out, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> Get this stuff out of here. Yeah, they're like, like especially when I'm already working on another one, I gotta like move it away, put it to the side, 
put uh, bring it out, and then I, I gotta see if nothing's coming out. You know, I gotta make sure that it's really everything's glued together. And especially, I like to mess with all the dioramas in case uh, any of the chip paints. I'll go ahead and redo it. But like by like customizing, so you gotta mess with the joints, make sure everything is working all good. You don't have any paint chipping out. That's the same thing I do with the dials. I uh, I put them away, I bring them back out, I basically play with them, make sure that um, there's no paint coming out or the glue is is nice and dry and everything. Yeah. If I need to do a little bit re, uh, retouch up or something. But yeah, That's good. like fun, I think they're all frustrating at one point that, <laughs> that you don't want to, it kind of it kinda stops being a little fun. They're still fun uh, at the end of the day, but Sometimes, sometimes they, all of them get a little bit frustrated, especially when you have a customer, client, like pushing. Hey, you, done yet? you done yet? Yeah. You done yeah. yet? How's it coming along? You done yet? Uh, yeah. Send pics. Can you send pics? <laughs> where you at? I know I messaged you yesterday, but where you at? I know, right? I see that. Like, yeah. Didn't I spoke with you yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> but I only, I only had like maybe like. One or two guys like that, but I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> uh, we like, want names, Henry. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. Burn it. <laughs> we want, want names. Them to, he wants them to be re repeat clients. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's, it's pretty cool. But I, uh, I, I like when when they leave. <laughs> I don't like to have them here, especially that um that Arkham dial. That thing was huge. It was like. It was like two parts and then um, like two feet tall, and two feet deep, and 18 inches Damn. wide, I think. So it was pretty big. And then it had the other dial on the side, the little uh, padded cell that I did. Do you typically use a, uh, a spray sealer or, um, or something you brush on? No, a I, I, uh, spray sealer. Okay. Yeah. Do you know offhand what uh, what brand? No. Uh, I no, but uh, the only thing I know is I I get it at Michaels. I, one of them I get it at Michaels, and the other one I get it at a Hobby Lobby, but I I don't remember the name of it. And right now I started using a brand new one, and I think that one. Um, I think I have it. Oh, I don't. I started using a new sealer, and I think that one, um, I think it works better. It's, uh, it comes in a bigger can, mm -hmm. and when you spray it, it doesn't smell that bad like the other one. The other, one, the other one's a little, little smaller one, and uh, when I spray it, it would, it would uh, kind of hit, hit you really good. Like, oh, crap. You would, you would <laughs> smell it. But uh, yeah, the other one is soft. I'll still wear a mask, but you can't really smell it. Yeah. And you typically use it indoors? No outdoors all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, Chris sort of was saying when he sees his customs, he usually does it indoors. Um, so I was wondering if that was a common thing because I wouldn't want to use any of that stuff indoors. When he paints them or when he seals them? I thought he said when he sealed them. Yeah, yeah. he was talking about the sealer. He's getting yeah. high off that thing. <laughs> well. Yeah. I don't know. Well, if you have a window next to you, I guess it'll be okay. And then, but you got to think about it. Figures like what, like six inches, ten inches yeah. max. I'm doing like big old walls that I can't have in here. <laughs> <laughs> Couple feet. Big old fat yeah. cloud in your room while you're freaking <laughs> trying to work. Uh, they'll come and watch me. I'll be thin on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Dad's Dad's passed out again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cause some, well, some it's of not so are, bad when you're stealing your projects with Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, anybody catch that? Yeah, I, yeah. I chuckled. I chuckled. Me too. <laughs> I used to use Aquanet back in the day, bro. No, I didn't. So, yeah. Now I used um, tres flores, three flowers. <laughs> so, um, being that 
there's a, a lot of guys, a lot of um, collectors that go to Frankenson's. Um, have anybody anybody know you outside of ACBA who's uh, approached you when you've been down there? Like, do they they know you? Mm. There was one, this one guy. I don't remember his name, but um, it was just once one one guy at Frankenstein's. Yeah, um, yeah. He was he, he was even telling me in my videos on YouTube that he was thanking me about doing them and all that. Yeah. That's that. So, yeah, just that one time. Everybody else is too nervous. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, that doesn't happen to us. You know, when people come up to us, you get ready just thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm on the triple C. Oh, no, I was just going to say, where's the bathroom at? Oh, it's right <laughs> over there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, I, we were... the same guy. Uh, he even took a picture with me. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I was like, what? He didn't post it, but whatever. Be careful. He might be using that picture for something else. <laughs> no, he was. <wasn't. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. he's not. Dang. <laughs> Hopefully, he's not one of those guys who is going to tell you to stop tagging ACBA in your Instagram pics. What happened? I said, hopefully, he's not one of those guys who is going to tell you to stop tagging ACBA in your Instagram pics. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, when we, uh, the first time I met Henry at uh, WonderCon, I was so excited just to meet up. I didn't think about it. Like, when I was walking away, I was like, shit, we should have got a picture together. I know, I remember that. We were, yeah. we were, we were too nervous. Yeah, too. I know. I, it was so hard finding you, too, because you kept, I swear you kept changing. You're like, yeah, I'm over here, and I'd go over, like, dude, I do not see you. No, no, I'm over here. Oh, I don't know, man. Where are you? <laughs> that was a long time ago, right? What was it, like two years yeah. ago? Yeah, like, mm, yeah, like maybe two, three years ago, something like that. It's a long time ago. I, don't know, I was surprised too. I thought it was just you, and you're like, "Oh, my family's here," and people just kept coming, man. Come, come, come. He's like, "Hi, nice to meet you." Yeah. Stop lying. It was only me and my sons. My four sons. Yeah, all four of them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lived really far at uh, the house. <laughs> yeah. Now it, it was good though. It was a good meetup. But right now when we do yeah. it, it's like what, like five, six of us. You missed that uh, last meetup over there at Frankincense. What was it? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it was like maybe like 12 of us, right? Yeah, we were rolling deep. Yeah. <laughs> Just rubbing it in. You guys should go. You guys are lacking it. How far are you again, um, Todd? Well, I just, drew, I just hung out with Punker Mike and... Um, and Wisman, uh, let's see, it took us, we left, I think we left around 10 in the morning coming home, and we got home around uh, 7 o'clock at night, so. Nine hours? Something like that, yeah, because traffic is a pain in the ass. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of hours. Yeah. It was a lot. It was easier. <laughs> it was easier coming down there because um, you know we left pretty early in the morning, so you know we got through Sacramento before uh, rush hour hit, and then um, we got into LA before you know it got real crazy. It was like three in the afternoon or something. But, yeah, over um, here the traffic's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty much. It was pretty much an all day drive. Um, uh, it, get, it gets bad over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Is it just, just me, or it seems like there's a lot of lag? Like, everybody's screen, like, uh, Punker Mike looks frozen down in the corner there. Oh, I'm just chilling, that's why. I think it's just I'm chilling so hard. <laughs> I'm chilling so hard. I'm We're all just stuck in the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, uh, no. <laughs> It's Nobody moved for 30 seconds. <laughs> huh, okay. 
Everything's yeah, going to get on my part. I don't know how it's recording, you know what I mean? Like, how it's going to show up on YouTube yeah. or, you know. Cause, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like Cause my sweet ass watch... intro with Chris Serta. <laughs> I was all choppy. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Max Headroom. <laughs> that intro. Oh, yeah. That was the one, huh? That was the video where you did the crazy intro? Oh, uh, yeah. And then my internet, my but my internet was all fucked up. I thought you, I thought you were gonna do it again. Like no, I would. Time. I just, I was, I yeah, literally yeah. like woke up. I took a nap, and my fiance took a nap too, and she's just like, "Hey, sh- aren't you on the podcast right now?" <laughs> oh dang! Scramble. <laughs> and that's why I give you guys so many warnings. Well, usually I don't take like a four-hour nap. No, I was like three-hour nap. Usually I don't take a three-hour. Usually I take like a two. Yeah, Punger Mike's not even wearing pants right now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't get up, though. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I have that figure. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get up. Well, I got to stretch real quick, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Henry, last year I uh, was able to interview you, and you, um, I asked you what... Uh, what figures you were most looking forward to that were going to be released, and, and you said the the Rhino build a figure and the Hulkbuster. Are were you were you as happy with those picks when they when you actually got the figures in hand? I think with the Rhino it was, but the Hulkbuster I think they they, they, they kind of killed it with the paints. Mm-hmm. But the Rhino I think it was it was really good. I have like three of them, <laughs> nice. and the Hulkbuster I, ne- I never made it out of the box. It's still oh, right. it. It doesn't so, look that. Um, of the figures that are still pending to come out, what uh, which ones are you most excited for now? Rogue, I would say. Mm-hmm. Right, Rogue, and who else coming out? Deadpool. We're getting, getting, yeah, new Deadpool, new Cable. Only Punisher. Yeah, that Punisher Savage. Yeah. There was another one. Which one was it? Uh, we're getting a new Iceman. Um, Phoenix. Oh, we're also getting a Figma Deadpool. That one looks pretty good. Yeah. Right? I think I'm more excited to have that than the Hasbro one. What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not sure yet because they haven't showed the official image for that one. They just put out like a picture of Deadpool. Um, everyone thinks that they're gonna make it like how all the customizers have been doing it, but I, I don't think so. Like how people just been taking the snake and painting it, you know, red and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure Figma's gonna do like a you know a whole new mold or something. Yeah, like a whole new thing for him. So I mean, I'm I'm not sure. And the Hasbro one is gonna be coming with some extra stuff too, so that's pretty nice. Like you get the unmasked head. Uh, weapons, bazooka. You get a pinky finger thing. You get a taco, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Tacos. Taco. You're gonna have to get a bunch, bunch of them just so you can get like a six pack of tacos, you know? <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too hard to get. Maybe Keep telling you guys, dollhouse for uh, food. Dollhouse for castle, food. Cast those tacos, dude, and you can have all the tacos you want. There we go. That's uh, a good idea. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think I think I'm most looking forward to uh, Tigra. Is that confirmed? Did Rectangular post that in a video? He did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yeah. still waiting for him to tell me when that damn X Men wave's coming out. <laughs> 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 Jerks holding out. <laughs> well, probably July. Which is probably when this podcast is going to air. <laughs> I'm going to quote you on that. The, yeah, I'll probably ha- know that information by the time this airs, though. Um, My yeah, sources believe, say probably. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it's already May. It's crazy. Year is almost half over. Yeah. I'm still no ninjas. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I told people, it's like, it's probably going to be August. Yeah, I when? Too much. August, when September. Say, like, when were they supposed to come out? I think it said May. Yeah, like, end of May or something like that? Uh, maybe in, like, mid-May or something. Yeah, they're not even done tooling them yet. Yeah. Yeah. I keep getting those emails with uh, advertisements from them. <laughs> like, is this it? Is this it? And I see a bunch of crap. All crap. Congratulations! You can pre-order more. Buy more. <laughs> buy more. Me I, out, I, I actually wanted to go back and buy some more stuff, but man, they really jacked up the prices. Which oh, yeah. I can understand for people who are late coming in, but if you already are giving them. You know, hundreds of dollars. I don't think they should be doing that to the people who already boosted them up. You know what I mean? They should be like, okay, mm -hmm. you're already, you're already a uh, what's it called? Um, a backer, uh, devoted, devoted legion. You know, they, we're not gonna, we're not gonna gouge you even more. You know? Yeah, especially because we help, basically. Then, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. without uh, us, they wouldn't exist. You know, the line wouldn't be. How much are they now? Like forty, forty-five, I think. Well, I was gonna get two, two, um, you know, the, I don't know, the guys in the geese, basically, and uh, and with with shipping, it was gonna be ninety-five dollars for the two of them. Wow. Ooh, so that's yeah, forty forty-seven fifty a piece. That's why I didn't buy any more. I wanted to buy more. Because I wanted to kind of do it like every paycheck I buy like one or two and kind of keep doing that. And then I seen that I'm just like, uh, yeah, no. Especially after you <laughs> that, that's, that what you paid before and you got to pay more now. I'm just like, eh, I'll just wait for round two. Right. Whenever yeah. that comes out. The Pirate Series. <laughs> Hopefully they make a lot. Yeah. It'd be nice if somebody like uh, Entertainment Earth or Big Bad Toy Store or something like that would, uh, you know, Put in a big order, and then they yeah. have you know, hopefully, so that the price mm -hmm. will be more like the original price instead of you know this inflated price now. But you know, I didn't think about that before. But since they're getting like all the tooling done and everything, like after the production's over, they'll still have the capacity to make these figures. So, what do you guys think they're gonna do, like with all the tooling and stuff? Well. To some extent, I mean, you know, they can only use a mold for so long before it starts to wear, break down. That's why, that's why knockoffs are never as good because they basically just keep running. You know, once Hasbro, for example, we'll just say Hasbro. Once Hasbro says, okay, we're gonna make ten thousand Deadpool's, and you know, they go ahead and make the molds and then they make those figures. Because they can only make so many uh, plastic figures out of that mold before it starts to break down, mm -hmm. then you know they then Hasbro's gone, their their production runs done. Some some guy you know person over in China will say, oh well, I will pay this factory and you know so much money. It's probably either some guy who works there or or is a relative. And says, "Go ahead and keep the production line going. I'll pay you X amount of money, and I'll sell those on my eBay site. Mm. That that's how we get all these knockoffs, you know, after the initial production run. And uh, they're never, you know, never as good. Usually, the plastic is much worse. You know, there's a lot more um, quality control issues because they don't have people really, you know." They're just slapping them together, and there's nobody really checking them, and um, and then the the actual um, you know the parts don't match up as well because that mold has already started to break down. So what you're saying is that there's a chance we're going to be getting knockoff ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on you know if if somebody from AI goes over there and says you know okay. Give me the damn mold. You know, I want to watch you destroy the molds, or I want to take them, so that there aren't knockoffs. Uh huh. You know what I mean? And you know what though? This is kind of a leap in logic. Like, there's no proof of this at all. But one of the major issues with 
you know, Shocker Toys, GBJR Toys, Jeff Beckett, like that whole shit show, was he was saying he needed money for the tooling, and then after he got the money and stuff, he said that the Chinese factories were holding the tooling ransom from him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the, you know, we have not gotten any knockoff or even more production or anything, so, you know, taking what you're saying with a grain of salt, and applying it to that situation, one could logically argue that Shocker Toys was full of shit and never even got the tooling finished. Yeah. That's definitely possible. Yeah, I'm still salty about that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I've never been over there. You know, I'm not in the, I'm not in the, uh, you know, toy production world, but, I'm just speculating that, that that's what's going on. Right? Right. This is not speculation. This is the X Files yeah. over here. Don't don't quote us. But I do know that you know if you talk to Dwight Stahl or any of those guys, they can only use a mold for so long. And I you know I do have man, you know, I did work in manufacturing for a while, and I do understand that the that parts or molds things that have to be um, when you pour something into it after so many times it, it, it will break down you know there's that that's not up for debate but what, what is de- up for debate is how how these uh, knockoffs get created so mm-hmm. but anyway we're off on a tangent <laughs> Henry who who um who do you like? Uh, who are you a fan of in the in the dial game? Like, who do you, whose work do you like uh, looking at and and inspecting? Mm. <clears throat> oh, <okay. laughs> I like Diego. Like, like yeah, oh, nice he's like DMC, I'm DMC, DMC. I was like, how nice of you to say. Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like a lot of people that do a lot of good work. Um, I like uh, Chris. He does a lot of good work. And also Al. When you say Chris, you're talking about Chris Gupton, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, Al Figures. Oh, the other Chris. What other Chris? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. That's the only Chris. Also, um, I think um, his name is Steve uh, Pink Samurai. Oh uh, yeah, JD Meg. There you go. Samurai, Steve McComb. Um, he was one of the first guys that I saw when I started making dials. It was him and um, and Al that I started seeing. And Flash as well. I like his work as well. Hmm. But I yeah, guess I remember, uh, I remember you saying you first got um, turned on to dial from Bob the Odd. Well, when when I when I started asking questions regarding dial work, uh, I had, I remember I hit up uh, Flash. I don't know, I don't think he remember, but uh, I asked him first, and he was the one that told me to go and um, check out uh, Bob's Bob's videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So from there, I started seeing his videos, and basically, I learned what uh what he was teaching on his videos, and then I started making my own stuff. But yeah, so it was just them three, and of course Bob. But I, I didn't um I didn't see Bob the Odd on Facebook or anything. I didn't know he was there until basically at the end when I was already making dials. But yeah, them 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 three I think they, they uh kind of inspired me to start making dials. And the DMC of course. <laughs> uh. Go ahead. I was gonna say I actually haven't seen much of Diego's work. I, well, make, I think he makes one every year or something. Something like that. <laughs> I, I have a I have a big one that I'm doing right now for uh for Darius. That he's probably mad at me because it's taking like a long time. <laughs> but I, it's because I've been working on his for like a while now. Gotcha. It's a big one. It's a big one too. It's probably like the biggest one that I've made. Just don't um, give him. Just don't give him the excuse that you're too busy with the podcast because that won't fly. <laughs> nah. <laughs> He'll be like, you're never on there anyways. But you can't use that as, as an excuse. <laughs> exactly. 
Man, Todd, I'm so glad you're not like an ex-wife or something. You just fucking nail people, dude. Well, don't say it was a podcast, motherfucker. <laughs> That's that. Uh, yeah, I'm not a Scorpio. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, but, but right now I think there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of good work, though. like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they're very starting. I think there's another guy that uh, really does good work. I think his, his name is Mike Guy or something. Mm. He, um, he's, I think he's, in, he's on uh, PP. I'm not really sure though, but um, oh, Michael Guy. So the guy that made that like storefront. No, I think that's that's uh, Tom, right? Oh, Tom Bud. Yeah. No, but the other guy that I'm telling you is some other guy. Hmm. His name is. Let's see, I think I have him here. Michael Padilla. Huh? No, no, Michael yeah. Padilla. No, not him, but he does good work too. Like a hmm. uh, really good work. Me and him, I think we kind of started the same, I think. I'm not really sure. And the guy, so, Jamie uh, Freeman? Whatever? Um, I don't know if you guys talked about it already, but um, I was going to say, uh, what kind of like feedback do you get on your dioramas when you put them up at places like uh, the comic bug and the movie theater and stuff. Do you ever hear like people come by and like talk about it and you just kind of stand there, you know, listening? Mm, not really. Like when we're there, it's really rare when there's a lot of people. Hmm. I know um, when we, when um, Bobby and Adrian and me were at uh, Frankincense, we set up a couple of displays and there was a lot of people that, um, they were stopping by and looking at the dials. Like, oh, you made that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, really good. And they're like, oh, crap. And they were asking like, prizes and all that. And like, hmm. I don't they were like, checking it out really, really, like, I mean, they were really into it. So, but nice. That's about it. Nothing nothing too major on it. Okay. Yeah. How many people were hitting you up for commissions or wanting to buy them right there? Most of the people were like, "Oh, that's that, that's a lot of work. I'm sure I can't afford that," <laughs> and they would just walk away. But they would they wouldn't ask. And they're like, "You're right. Go away. <laughs> You're right. Go away." There was, like, there was like only like one or two guys that took my card, and they're like, "Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, send you a message or uh, I'll email you and all that." Do you ever hear back from them? Well, I get, I get a lot of emails from a lot of people, so I don't really know who they are. Like right now, I'm I'm um I'm start working on, on another dial. And I don't know how he found me, but uh, it's through an email. <laughs> I got in a lot of emails through you, a lot of emails from from commission. And like, oh. well, it's probably like a lot of word of mouth too, like uh, people that you've done before. Um, they'll people ask them, hey, where do you get your dials from, or who do you recommend, and they'll throw out your name because they're probably like easy to work with or whatever, you know. So a lot of it's just the, the people that you've done it for, like they like you so much they. They throw your name out there, like, oh yeah, I go talk to Henry, you know, like he's a cool guy, and you know, he does good work, whatever. A lot of it comes from people, from word of mouth yeah. too. Also, Instagram, Instagram does uh, helps a lot. They, yeah, it does. yeah, it does. Like I got, I got a bunch, like I got a few people from Instagram, like or I probably would have never, uh, or they probably would have never found me if um, I were not wasn't on Instagram putting stuff up. So Instagram's like really good. Yeah, it's a really really good. Um, to promote there, like most of my dials are from there. Uh, I don't really have a lot of people that I've done on ACBA or um, on Facebook. Most of the stuff that I do is because I'm doing it for people on Instagram. Um, I was gonna say that uh, Daniel Pickett from Action Figure Insider, the the guy who runs Action Figure Insider, uh, shouted out uh, Henry and Fabio, mm -hmm. uh, their dials at uh, the Comic Bug like a while back on Instagram and I tagged you guys on it that he was like, oh wow, uh, you know, this is pretty cool, check this out. And then I tagged you guys and then uh, Fabio had just talked to him the other day. He yeah, saw him at uh, fucking uh, Toys R Us when he was looking for that alien figure. Nice. Does, does, uh, Pick, does Pickett live in LA? 
in this around this area because he's close to five. He went. He goes to the comic bug to get his comics, I guess. Cool. And he met up Fabio. Or Fabio bumped into him at a Toys R Us, so he lives like in Fabio's area. Nice. I always knew he was in. Uh, he's in Southern California. I just didn't know exactly where. Um, and I told I told Fabio too. I was like, "Hey, tell him to fucking promote ACPA on his website." Yeah. So he kind of like threw something out there. So who knows? Is that guy like a YouTube reviewer or what? No, it's his own. You never seen that site, Action Figure Insider? No. Nah. It's nah, mostly it's, news. Yeah, it's mostly news. It's a, like a news website for for uh, toys. Oh, okay. But he's been around for a long time. Kind of like yeah. Marvelous News like that? Yeah, kind of like that. Oh, oh, you mean that biter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't really. I go to I go to this guy named Rectangular for all my news, but I've I've never, you know. never heard of her. Oh shit! <laughs> Hilarious. I'm off the grid. I don't even know what figures you guys are talking about. I don't get news from anybody. I only collect <laughs> statues. I just yeah. get news from Facebook, and that's it. PMP, dude. PMPs, everything's right there. Yeah, like, whatever you guys. Wait. Whatever you guys <laughs> tell me, that's how I what I know. <laughs> Yeah, I only see new pictures from Diego's Instagram. <laughs> Good luck. That's like once a week. <laughs> Diego beats me to the punch. Like I'm, I'm in the middle of editing a video and he's going up, uploading pictures to Instagram. Like fuck. Well, that that was, that was a rare occasion. That was one that'll probably never happen again. <laughs> Todd's like, hey Diego, look what I found. Diego's all sweet. Yo P and P, look what I found. <laughs> I was like. Hey, hey. Party, buddy. Yeah, it was Diego and um, God, I'm trying to remember. I don't know. It was Jezreel or Sentinel. I don't know. One of those guys that were like so back and guy. forth. Jezreel and Sentinel's the same guy. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe it was him. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was like the, the two of them were killing me that one day. I don't remember what it was. What was it? I'm pretty uh, sure it was Diego uh, and the DMC. Those two guys. <laughs> Fucking bastards. Those jerks. I think, hey, it was, was it the Walgreens? I think it was the Walgreens figures, wasn't it? I don't I remember. I think it was the Walgreens and like the Iron Mans, maybe? I don't know. So, Henry, what, um, let's see. What uh, figures did you get lately that you're pretty happy with? Uh, well, today I got the. Um, uh, Batman Select, uh, the Riddler from uh, the show. What's his name? Uh, okay. Enigma. There you go, Enigma. I got him and I got a um, the WWE figure just for the props. For the the the, the Riddler is a it's all right, but it comes with a with the with the desk and the other one comes with the with a table with a round table and a chair. Fifteen bucks. Oh, okay. On and Amazon, and the other one was like twenty-two. Yeah, I want that Enigma figure to go uh, go cheap on Amazon, so I can order a shitload, so I can get a bunch of tests. Go cheap on it. I think it's gonna go higher. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. I gotta get it. Yeah, but you just gotta keep an eye on those um, like select figures. I found the first wave for like what ten bucks each, eight bucks each on um, Think Geek. Oh, like a while back. Do they? They only come with a with a little base, or yeah, they weren't that great. But I was like, hey, for like five bucks, I'm like, I'm just getting them to check them out. The bases were okay. Um, one was like a it's like a scaffolding. It's a little small, but you can still use it. That was probably like the best one was like the scaffolding. And for that one with the bookcase, that one was nice. Oh, that's a third series. That's a third series. That one's gonna be really good. With Bruce, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one was good. You know what looked really good with the Enigma figure? Uh, Michael Amsberg, he popped Commissioner Gordon's head off and put it mm -hmm. on uh, Enigma. That should look really good. Oh, uh, yeah. He yeah. showed me that shit last night. It looked tight. I was going to say, Henry, you're, you don't really mess with DC much, right? Not really. No, I don't have a lot of stuff. I, I only have a few. Um, I only have a few. I think I, I only have that Mesco Batman. And um, a few of the of the new wave that came out, 
The little ones. Which ones are they? The oh, are Muppets? Ones. Which ones? Muppets? No, 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 no. It's, they're from DC. <laughs> the animated series. There you go. Oh. Uh, I, I got into that line a little bit. I got, like, uh, I think I got uh, Harley Quinn. DC Collectibles. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got uh, Green Arrow as well. Just a few of them. Oh, the icons. Yeah. Oh, the I icons. In the uh, animated series. They can't keep up with DC. They, they got direct. Yeah, they, they have icons. They have... They have too many. Yeah, I mean, DC UC is gone now, but, man. The new wave is coming out. looks pretty good. I don't know if it's icons as well. The new Harley Quinn, the one that comes with, uh, with the big old hammer. The icons too. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Anybody? Well, that might be. Um, you can't wear uh, with the hands and the big hammer. Probably animated series, probably. No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No, I don't no, think no, they were making icons of her. It's probably yeah. icons. She was supposed to be out like in February, but they pushed the date back or something. Yeah, they did. Well, hopefully because yeah. of the like, crappy quality. That one yeah, looks the pretty good. Harley Quinn is the only one I really want it. Yeah. I want to get back real though, because I want that. I want to, that cycle looks pretty nice that she comes with. The wheelchair? No, the motorcycle. <laughs> well, that too. I want to get that. But the bad girl with the motorcycle. Damn. Oh, Val. Val. <laughs> the wheelchair. <laughs> oh, damn. Finisher. <laughs> <laughs> they they need to um get some new figures for that with better articulation so a lot of people could jump on them. You guys seen what Billy did to his icons Batman? Like he actually made it to what they advertised, like where the head could look up and down and the thigh swivel and stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I saw. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, because that figure you can you you can't look up with it. They should, uh, they should have a class action lawsuit for false advertising on that shit. There you go. <laughs> have you recently bought a Batman figure? You may qualify. Call now. <laughs> they have better call Saul. Prices right and shit. Like you know, they always have those fucking things running during Prices Right. The lawsuit yep. ones. <laughs> better, better call Saul. I got my class action lawsuit check for eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you guys have any more questions for Henry? Michael, you had some more questions. Always. You had some good questions. I uh, I, sc- I stepped away. And I kind of threw myself off. I forgot what everybody was talking about. But um, if you could be any superhero, who could who could you be? <laughs> <laughs> you want a million dollar? Um, I know. I know Henry's uh, probably looking for um, if we get a new Wolverine, or we're, we're supposed to be getting a new Wolverine, but they haven't said if it's going to be male or female. Which version of Wolverine? Really? I was gonna say it was a girl. <laughs> which one? Which one? If, if, you know, which one would do you want it to be? Male. Yeah, new brown new, suit. Like, yeah, like an older Wolverine would be good. You want old man Logan, or you want? Uh, yeah, I think that'd be good to have to add to the collection, right? I think we need, we need one. I think we also need a new uh, saber tooth too. Yeah, saber tooth. They still haven't. Mm-hmm. They still haven't got them right. The other one that came out. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a classic one. Now I've got three different saber tooths. Um, I really like. Uh, I really like this. I think it's series five or series. Yeah. Series five saber tooth. That one's really nice. <laughs> what about the face off one? Uh, that one's pretty cool. They, that's not the classic one, is it? Yeah, that's a classic saber too. That's like a first appearance saber too. Mm. I think, I'm trying to remember, but um, yeah, I'm 
Oh yeah, if there, um, there was a, th I think it was Todd who said this one, but if you had like unlimited resources to build a diorama for yourself, what would you build? Yeah, he already answered that. You missed it. Oh, oh. What? Oh, wrong. Oh, what was it? What was it for get off, late? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait. Get off Facebook Live and then you find. Oh out. man, you're gonna have to uh, here later on. So make sure you you tune in. You have to wait, Dang. bro. You missed the boat. <laughs> you missed the boat. <laughs> Trying now, to lock in those views. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to hear it again? I'll say it again. Kill, kill more time. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying that I, I would, I would um, kind of build like, uh, like a couple of buildings, maybe like two or three, just like a, mm. like a mini city. Just like go like go really into it with mm -hmm. a lot of detail, like a, even like a road in the middle, light poles and lights and everything. Now that works basically, but that won't be that would be like for me, for me. like a, like a four by six nice. something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of uh, I'm gonna try doing the uh, the J Riv route with uh, the cardboard box cardboard boxes and those uh, printed out. Uh, plastic bricks that come in the sheets. Oh, okay. I've got yeah, they sell those during like mostly during Christmas. I've got a ton of those, and I've got a ton of uh, doors. Well, windows mostly. Um, so I'm gonna. Those are pretty good. And what uh, black wash? I seen that, and they look pretty okay. Yeah, I'm right. hoping I can pull it off. Since I, you know, I don't, I don't have nearly the skills that you guys have. They look good. I, I seen them, especially when you put them in the background and like go a little farther away because they're kind of small, right? Uh, I think I think they're probably more more accurate to you know how I think most people when most people make dios they make the bricks really big. Right, right now I went a little smaller on my bricks too. I I started doing them, I think about an inch, ha half an inch. To an inch long or something, but right now I went a little smaller. I'm not really sure what size are they anymore, but um, I did win a little thinner on them. They're still uh, an inch long, but they're about I, I'm not really sure. They're, well, they're smaller. <laughs> they're more accurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He put his bricks on a diet. Yeah, it, it, they needed it. Cause they, yeah, Todd is right. They they kind of look a little big when, <laughs> when you focus on them. You yeah. See. I mean, you know, if you hold a brick in your hand, it it's you know it doesn't stick out that much farther on each side. And most people, man, they make the bricks like, you know, twice like as big as a shoebox. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you see it? yeah, and it, you know, to be fair, they make bricks in big in different sizes, but you know, like your traditional brick for like a um, what's it called, like a fire, like a fireplace, those are much smaller. Can so you guys see the size on this or no? Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. But those are they are a little smaller than the other ones. Because I think everybody uses... But Todd wants you to put it in his hand. I'll cut it off and I'll put it in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you should, when you go to Frankenstein's Henry, you should try to trade one of your dios for figures because there's this one guy that has a dio and every time I go in his booth, everybody's always freaking out about it and it's not even that great. It's like, man, if someone that made like a fire dio and sold it... And then, like, you had your business card on it or some shit? That'd be tight. Which one is it? I don't know. It's the dude. He has a bunch of, like, men on card stuff that's expensive. And then he has, like, a, a case that has a bunch of loose figures. Oh, okay. And then he's got, like, a little dial. Uh, a little dial that has, like, a ladder on the side or something? Yeah, it's got, like, a ladder on the side and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, I think it's all messed up. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe when it first got made, it looked good. But you could tell that thing, like, it has been, like, moved around. and. Yeah, it looks sloppy. Yeah, the cuts and everything. It's like, in that, like a little alley, right? 
Yeah, it's like a little alley kind of thing. Uh, but every time, because I always kind of peek in that guy, because at one point that guy had like soda Street Fighter figures for pretty cheap. Everything else he sells is really expensive, like yeah. junk card shit. He he um, has a lot of crap though. Like a lot yeah, of good stuff. he does. And uh, every time I go in there, I was, oh, is that shit for sale? Oh, how much is that? Oh, do you make those? And I'm really? just like, dude, you guys don't even know. <laughs> I was like, contemplating making like a dial and just like going around, and be like, yeah, man, can I trade this for some like store credit or something? Or you probably get it. Oh uh, yeah. That's a good thing about uh, Frankenstein. They're always going to do to do anything over there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I see people try to trade shit and sell shit all the time. I brought, I got um, this one guy off Craigslist. You know the old '80s Hasbro um, WWF figures? They have like the action feature. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like that big. Mm -hmm. Some guy gave me a box of the men on card ones and a bunch of loose ones for like twenty bucks. Men? So I just, I just wow. Yeah, it was like estimated. I estimated out uh, got probably like three hundred dollars worth of stuff for like twenty bucks. And I just went around. I'm like, "Yo, man, I'll trade you figure for figure." Although this shit goes more than that. And I got a bunch of stuff. I got the um, bootleg Neca turtles, um, like a bunch of shit. I can't even remember some legends. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, they're down to do anything over there. Trade, buy, uh, sell. You, want to you can you can buy Let shit. You know which ones? What happened? I was like, if you're fine, <laughs> buy shit for whatever. One at a time, boys. One at a time. What, Diego? I said, uh, let me know which ones are down for whatever, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> don't you know that. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody. Uh, yeah, like that. Woo! You have to look high and low for that this one. This must not be going on Wednesdays, then. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday night after hours. Yeah, because Wednesdays are slow. They're the slowest. Yeah. You know? That's why they're probably the most desperate. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, that dude who's got the uh, sloppy dio in his booth, he probably got it from uh, a wannabe rapper guy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> what... what uh, um, <laughs> what dirty? What, he uh, he washes his his figures in a dirty sink. <laughs> that's how he black. <laughs> that's how he black washed the dial. Yep. <laughs> filled up his dirty ratty tub and just dipped that shit in there. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>, yes. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Oh, man. You, guys are, you guys are talking all this mess, and you're going to go and flip it over by the DMC. I know. <laughs> you're sharpie. Yeah, you guys are assholes. You're like, why are you guys making fun of me? Uh, <laughs> man, I wish, like, the shops here, the gaming shop here, um, the owner makes dioramas, but he makes them smaller scale for the miniatures. And he'll like do like uh, eight feet by four feet, like gigantic things to fit these tables he made. So like that would be a no go. Like if I went in there, like I'll trade you a diorama for paint, he'd just fucking laugh me out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dudes. I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to cut out a little early. It's 10:30, and I gotta finish my uh, entry here. Ooh, yeah. Mr. Last Minute. All right, go. Good luck. Mike, are you, are you still, you're still in it, aren't you? Me? Nope. No? Connor, Connor knocked me out, dude. Oh, second. That's, that's right. Did you do the redemption? Yeah, I did the redemption, but I don't know. I didn't I didn't put as much effort as I should have, and I didn't, I didn't well, get like, redeemed. There's like a couple more things, so I'm wondering if they're going to be like redemptions again or something, because there's a couple more like surprise rounds, I guess. I wonder if they're going to do it again. Mm. Well, it is, I'll, I'll try. I mean, I'll try to get back in because, you know, I like competing and stuff, but All right. I don't think so. All right, dudes. All right, good bro. Talk with everybody. Thanks, Henry. All right, man. Have a good night. All right, later, dudes. Later. All right, now that, now that Diego's John gone. Connor bro, just... Now let's really do it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, are you embarrassed for your shirt? record. No <laughs> your camera is like your head is at the very bottom of the screen and there's like all this headroom above you. You're not naked, are you?
Man. You heard me with no pants. Who's trying to one-up me? He's going straight. He, he, he has no pants. I have no pants and no shirt. <laughs> He, he must. He doesn't want Man, us to I'll see. His, he, he doesn't want us to see his stakes. <laughs> yeah. Man, Jeez. you guys get a couple of, uh, podcasts under your belt, and you guys want full body cams now. Well, Todd, dude, on the ACB podcast casual. beefing it. I seen Todd on the ACB podcast beefing it, dude. I was like, dang, this guy. <laughs> he showed us his stakes yeah, one time, and he showed us beefing it. <laughs> Yeah, I seen him like this. Yeah, Pharaoh, what's up? Yeah, I'm on the podcast. <laughs> he, mount, he just mounted a GoPro so he could just fucking lift while he's, you know, on the feed. <laughs> yeah, it's all Michael's fault. He came over and he's like, now. he's like, you can't leave until you do ten pull-ups. He's like, you, you can't, you can't have dinner until yeah. you, until you knock out ten pull-ups. <laughs> You can't eat and feed it in pull-ups. That's right. Henry, you got to come to our meetups. We're doing pull-ups. <laughs> I'm good. We're hanging out in laundromat. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, Henry, is there anything that you like like to do um, outside of the hobby? Like, uh, do you play music or anything else? <laughs> nah. That's about it. There's uh, work and uh, ACBA. And the family Work thing. hard, play hard. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you have time to build dials with five kids. I put them to do stuff, too. They'd be uh, doing the black wash, the cleanup, the uh, washing the brushes and all that. i got to put them to work. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now they're third. Beltran Industries. That's what I'm, I think I'm going to use that for my, um, for my diorama stuff. Beltran Industries. I like that go. one better. There you, go, there you go, man. When you go to Franken's house to hustle, those oh, you know what? Figures, you gotta have your kids do it, right? Passing cards, flyers. Yep, yeah, pass them out. <laughs> Give them a big stack. You know, this is. Uh, you should give what? some uh, tips to us for dumpsters because we all got dumpsters we need to do. I just did a mini tutorial. I didn't, you guys didn't see it? With the yeah. barrels. Yeah, yeah. I, I I did the same thing on um, on a dumpster. It's basically the same okay. thing. The paint that I use on the on the on those barrels, uh, I get it from um, from one of those shops that you're um, that you're talking about, Michael. That uh, you use a Citadel uh, paint, right? Shops. Yeah, that's the paint that I use. And I I heard last time that you guys were talking about the about the rust that um. Like the like the green rust, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. That wash with like oxidation. Yeah, that wash. This is the one that does it, and uh, this is the one that I use for the. Um, where's it all? For the rust, and if you water it down a little bit, mm -hmm. it gives you it, it it turns more into an orange one. If you 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 can do the same process to the to the trash cans, and it works pretty good. I made nice. several dumpsters already. To know. Hey, Michael, what about the? Were you talking about that one that's like a rust kind of one, but it actually has like granules of stuff in there? Or was that someone was talking about that? I don't think that I talked about that, but I know what you're talking about. They sell a. It's called a technical paint, and it has oh, like yeah. grit in the paint. Yeah. So when you yeah, apply yeah. it, it has that rust, and it kind I've of. I've seen those. Too, right. Well, I don't remember the colors that comes in, because um, I think it's for um, I think it's for when you do a miniature and you have like a plain base and you want it to be kind of like sand, but like not really sand, and you use that paint and then you dry brush over that. Oh, but yeah, okay. you could probably use it for like gritty, like gunk, you know, like the bottom of the dumpster, like gunkiness. Or you know when something gets so fucking ru uh, rusted that it's like pitted and it starts to like swell in some spots? Or yeah. yeah. Mm. Speaking of dumpsters, where's like my a person with no dental insurance? <laughs> 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 no, I was actually gonna start working on it. I was just finishing yeah. up this dial I was making, and then I was actually gonna start on that one. No, take your time, man. All right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but hey, 
Henry's uh Henry, your tutorial really saved me, dude. Um, using the sponge because I had been dry brushing like everything, everything I always dry brush, and oh. I have sponges. And then you did that video, and then uh, John Connor did a live session where he was sponging shit. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to try that shit. And that, like, that saves so much time, and it looks so much better. Yeah, it does. It really, okay, really it does. does. Way better. What other tips can you give us? For that, I, I've been trying to um, get, like, a powder that does the same thing, like a rust, but I haven't been able to find it. But there's a lot of things that you guys could do for, for rust. I, like I said, I've been looking into that. I um, I don't know what it is though. I I heard about it. It's like this powder, and I think I don't know if you mix it with paint or you just kind of like brush it in there. Nah. And it gives There's you. There's a. It's called uh, it's called like weathering minerals or weathering powders, and it you don't most of them you don't have to mix. You just think like makeup, like where you take the thing and you kind of mm -hmm. do it, and like that's it. You have to seal it afterwards though. Oh. But yeah, a lot of people who do like uh, model tanks, like World War yeah, I see uh, type models, yeah, they use those weathering, um, I think it's called weathering minerals or weathering uh, pigments, Okay. something like that. I've seen them too because I actually saw a tutorial on how to paint like rock, but like realistic rock. Like, Because if you really look at rocks, like sometimes they have like, kind of like a skin tone kind of color with like reds and greens and blues like when you really look mm -hmm. and I seen this tutorial where a guy painted like real rocks like it looked so real and all he was using was the different colors like you're saying off and keep doing that and then by the end of it it looked like crazy good yeah I've been trying to get into that a lot more try to um Actually, trying to get my uh, my um, like my rust technique a little bit more better. Like uh, when you're weathering buildings and all that, I want it to look more grimy. Mm. I think that looks really really good. Looking at pictures and all that, and also like when you're trying to do like a, like like rust, also mixing an orange with a brown really helps you a lot. It gives you that orange rust look, and when it dries up, it looks really really good. And it's just regular brown too. And I, when I posted that um, that video on, on um, I think it was Dio Structure, and one mm -hmm. guy left a comment saying that it was he, that he liked it, but he wanted it more orangey. But yeah, I cool. seen that. <laughs> like I said, it depends on what you like and on how you want it to look. But it's really a lot a lot of types of rust that you could do. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's even like oxid oxidation rust that's like green. Yeah, uh, you know, rust doesn't have to be orange. And sometimes it's like super dark brown, like a like a dirty dark brown. That's how oh, yeah. that's what I do it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I had learned about that I um, feel stupid that I didn't know about until uh, hanging out at Michael's house is um, uh, brush conditioner um, to clean your brushes yeah. with. Yeah. It yeah. helps you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to invest in some of that. A tub, man. Get the, get the, I don't know what the measurement is, but how they sell like a bucket. Just get that, man. It'll be set for life. Dude, the, the container you had was pretty big compared to what I had. Like, I'm telling you, like, mine's like a little. <laughs> Your chap, hey, you have a chapstick tube. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the Carmex one. It's like the little Carmex in the little can. It's like that. And then you had this big old one. You're like, oh, yeah, here's my brush conditioner. Like, <laughs> like dang. Not even. Not even. It was a little thing, and you're like, wow, that's massive. <laughs> uh, you know what I was thinking on that? Uh, you guys think if you put, like, hair conditioning, is still, uh, conditioner is still the same thing? You think it'll work? Mm. Um, I don't know. Wash it all out, though. I don't know which one you, you use, but I have a little pink bottle, and it, it basically uh -huh. does the same thing. It's, it's not really soap; it's just like a conditioner. So I don't know if I I would use um, like hair conditioner if it would, it would if it would um, keep the brushes soft. I'm guessing it will. It does it to the hair. You know what? It might also depend on the type of brush because uh, they make brushes with different types of bristles like there's uh, synthetic, uh, nylon, you know, horsehair. So I don't know if that would work on all brushes or just like certain uh, types. 
Well, what I'd be most worried about is the glue. If, the, if there's any chemicals that are in the conditioner that are going to eat the glue that is keeping the, br the bristles in there, then that could be a problem. So, um, you know, I think that that's why that this this product, this conditioner product, is is uh, specifically made so that it doesn't eat the glue that's keeping the br bristles in there. I don't know. Yeah. I think it'd be fine as long as you just mm -hmm. rinse it out. Like if you rinse it all the way out, because if you left too much conditioner, it might leave like oil in it. Like when you're mm -hmm. first when you start painting. Yeah. I think if you rinse it all the way out, it'd be fine. So what I do is I'll, I'll wash my brushes first, and then I'll use the, <laughs> the conditioner to help out. Yeah. So it won't be hard the next day. But I go through brushes like nah. pretty quick. I don't know about you guys. Hmm. Hmm. I try not to, but yeah. Like, I try to take care of the brushes and so often, yeah, it's just they're done, you know. Now, for dye work, you don't really need, like, uh, like a perfect brush. Right. Um, for customs, I know for customs, uh, if you have a pointy brush, it needs to be pointy. The, <laughs> when you're doing the next custom, if not, it's going to suck. If, when you're doing dials, if your brush doesn't look that good, it's still, it's yeah. still, still doable. All of Punker Mike's dials are going to start getting, like, more and more weathered because all his brushes are going to be fucked up from when he's using horse shampoo in them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dipping that shit in Soul Glow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I have, like, all the, I have, like, a lot of brushes that I've been using, like, this brush. I've been using this brush forever. I use this brush for everything. Toss uh, it. It's done. Not even, dude. <laughs> I got boot marks on the butt right here, man. <laughs> See, that laugh, that laugh it, busted that you, long. man. What's that? That laugh busted you. Bree's <laughs> laugh busted you. She, she yeah, knows, man. She saw that brush, and she's like, no she's way. She's like, oh, that ratty thing? Get that shit out of here. <laughs> she's like, I use that to clean the toilet, man. What are you doing? <laughs> No, but seriously, using the sponge, that, that fucking, like, next next level right there. Yeah, it's a good technique. I like it, too. Okay. Even for, <laughs> um, like, for okay. dials. I've used it on dials, too. Yeah, because um, I was making, I got some of those 3A figures, and they look really, like, gritty. So I wanted to make something that was a little more destroyed. So I kind of was making, like, an interior. And so I just got, this is um, scrapbook paper. Yeah. And so I put it on, and just, just using the sponge, I gave it that kind of, like, made it just look a little dirtier, because before it was too vibrant. Mm. And just using the sponge just a little bit, like, I'm still messing with it, but it made it so much better than just how it looked with just this on there. And yeah. it was, like, real easy. I was just dabbing it, and I'm just like, oh, man, this is so much easier than wasting all that paint and dry brushing a little here. Dry brushing takes forever. Yeah, that imprint that it leaves on, the, on whatever you're using it is really good. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. The dial wall looks great. Thank you. From here, it looks like it was burnt or something. Yeah, I tried to make what well, I made it, like, two-sided because I'm trying to make all my dials now two-sided. That way I have... Yeah. So yeah, I don't run out of space, pretty much. Um, yeah. So, like, one side, it's kind of, like, just all, like, destroyed. Well, kind of that. And then the other side, kind of make, like, an interior... And I'll make some other little pieces to go with it, but yeah, because I was I have a like a tool thing that I got from Costco. It's like a four tier tool thing, and it's already half filled with like dial pieces and like uh, figure like uh, backdrops, like the ones that like the Matrix ones that come like the little shit like that. So I'm just like fuck, dude, I gotta start double siding everything. I'm gonna you run out of room. What's that? You don't sell any of your dials? Nah. Um, I would if uh, actually I don't know. I don't really like selling yeah. stuff. It's, it's like, like, no, I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. I was like, I was like I'm, I'm the one. That, I'm the one. I sold my diary to that guy at Frankenson's, and nobody liked it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't like. I don't know. I guess I'd sell something. I don't know. I like trading stuff. Like John Connor, I made him that little dial, and I was like, because he he hooked it up with a bunch of stuff. Which one? Um, that one. It's like a staircase with all the graffiti on it with the fence. Oh, that was, that was yours? Yeah. I just That was, like, real quick, too. Um, I was just out of scrap pieces because, you know, the all the boards that you buy the two-by-twos and, like, freaking the last piece of it's always warped up. So I had a bunch of those pieces, and then I was like... So you made yeah. it off of that? Yeah, because he asked me to make him some props. So I made him a bunch of props, and then I was just like... Um, 
I was doing some graffiti on something, and I was like, oh, I'm going to make them a little, like, at first it was like a little corner piece, and then I added the stairs, and I kind of just added some more stuff. Um, I don't know. I like trading more than I like selling stuff. Just because, I don't know. I'd be like, someone be like, oh, yeah, they paid all this money, and they see it, and they're like, yeah, I paid for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always insecure about my artwork and shit. As long as it's not falling apart, you're good. Yeah. I know, I know everybody, when they see my stuff, they're like, oh, this shit's cool, this shit's cool, but still, I'm just like, since I built it from scratch, I can see all the imperfections, and I know how I did it, so I'm like, I'm like always insecure about that shit. Really? Your stuff looks pretty good. I like it. Thanks. For sure, man. Michael, too. Your stuff is really good, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm even worse than Diego. I'll do one, like, every two years, man. What are you building now? I saw, I don't know if it was in a podcast, that I saw mm. a dial in the background. Is it a podcast? It's basically like a two-story building, but it's so like... Why say it, it you're building it already? Huh? Why so say it and you're building it already? No, so I'm already... But it's being built. It's just... I didn't mean it to be so much. It's just when I... Like I was building... Because I saw, uh, you seen Manfred Mann's uh, dioramas recently? Manfred. Is he the guy that made that um, asylum prison? Yeah, yeah. Is he that one? He, um, yeah, he did some other ones I thought were really good, and he did this like rundown comic shop that I thought was really cool. So I was, I liked basically like the. Uh, the shape of the building, how it kind of like the door kind of came in from the street a little bit. I was trying to do something similar to that, but I didn't want to, you know, copy him or anything. So I was just made like a building and just kind of made that same shape. Mm -hmm. But when I was, uh, you know, building it up, there was so much open space that I was like, oh, well, I'll just start to put stuff here and here. And so now it's like a sidewalk. Uh, two-story building, you got like a shop, a full staircase, a hallway, another room, a roof, some stuff on the roof. So it's like, it kind of got ahead of me, like more than I planned, but once it's done, it'll be cool because there'll be a lot of stuff in one thing. It's pretty big. It's like, I want to say it's like two feet by two feet, and then it's like a little over two feet tall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty cool. I let you guys know how it comes out in like five years. <laughs> I was gonna say it's pretty ambitious. <laughs> Fully removable staircase and oh, every well everything's magnetized too. Like every part of it comes off and like the staircase comes off too. So that's been the hardest part was uh, cause like Punker Mike was saying, like all the foam that I got was all you know warped and fucked up. So basically, I would have to. Like, I, I would cut pieces and, you know, kind of rough it out, but nothing would really be flat. So I got it as flat as I could, and then I was doing the trimming of the room, like, with the wood and stuff, to fill in the gaps. So it all looks, you know, when it's put together with, like, all the wood, it looks like, you know, put together. But before that, oh, it was looking rough. Because you're using the wood, right? Huh? I said because you're using the whole board. What'd you say? The, I said because. Uh, no, I'm, no, what? I'm like using like you know cutting it and stuff. It's just the boards here, I guess, are just really bad. Like they're real, you know. It's like you can look at it and tell that it's like bent. Yeah, so, they're back here too. And I haven't. Yeah, I haven't found a way to fix that. I saw somebody had said they wet it a little bit and then they heat it and straighten it out. But I don't know. I tried like heating it. Like I left some in front of a heat lamp and then would try to fix them, but it didn't really do anything. So I don't know about that. I think I was thinking about if you soaked it and then you laid it flat with heat, it might do it. Um. But I think you'd have to have, like, legitimate stuff. I don't think you could just, like, do it with, like, a blow dryer and a couple books or something. You know? <laughs> you'd have to have, like, kind of, like, some, like, legitimate tools. Mm -hmm. Soak it in water? Yeah, because I think it would be more pliable if you have it soaked in water. Because aren't there, like, heat resistant up to a certain amount? 
So just heating it, I don't think, would do the trick. You'd have to kind of... Right. I know, I know, like, other foam, sure. like, poster four form, you put too much paint on it, and that shit curls like a motherfucker. Like, the shit you get at, like, right. the dollar store, the dollar tree, like, if you put too much paint on it, that'll curl right away. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> well, you know what? If, when you figure it out, you let everybody know, and you'll be the next diorama hotshot. You'll go down in history, punk or Mike, the guy that figured out how to fucking flatten your foam. <laughs> I'll probably die of breathing all that foam dust before I figure that out. <laughs> now, I was going to ask you guys, uh, especially Henry, what's the what's the best technique for sanding foam? Because that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, I don't. I try not to sand any foam. I don't. I don't really know if it's <laughs> if it's that safe to be. Even though you're wearing a mask, yeah. I don't know that crap is is too safe to be. I don't give a fuck. I do it. <laughs> I have a. Uh, I have a, a, a electric sander, just like a regular one, and I just do that. I put it on a flat table, and I just uh, I open my mouth, and I, uh, and I breathe it all in. No, uh, <laughs> no I don't. Want to. I don't know, sometimes I wear sometimes I wear a bandana and goggles. Sometimes I won't. I'll just like hold my breath, and then I'll just freaking because I don't like that gloss layer. I don't like the gloss layer on the foam. I like taking the gloss layer off because the paint. I feel like you have to use less coats when you do that. And it's easier to cut for me. I don't know. It's just my preference. But I always just sand both sides. Mm-hmm. And then when I cut it, um, sometimes, you know, you don't get a good, a perfect cut. So I, I just try to sand it like that. Please wear a mask because I don't want to start calling you Cancer Mike. Uh, <laughs> cancer Mike. I don't know. I'll wear a bandana. Oh, that's about it. Or like a T-shirt. Like I, I know how to wrap a T-shirt around my head to look like a ninja. So We used to like do that as kids. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was the cool kid because no one knew how to do that. So I would always take my shirt off in the playground and I'd wrap it as a ninja and I'd be like, oh, how'd you do that? I'm like, I'm going to tell you. That's fucking ninja secret right there. Dude, next podcast. That's, you know, the next podcast got to open up with the intro. Everybody's got ninja shirts. Oh, yeah. That'd be tight. We'll do that once we get our, our, our articulated icons for to celebrate. Oh, nice. We're doing it, dude. We'll do a live one even. Henry's like, no. <laughs> nah. Yeah, but He's I... Like, I yeah, I'm not, busy, though. I try not to sand any on my phone. If I And, and uh, i seen that it does give you a, a different texture if, if you go ahead and sand it down. Especially, um, depends on what you're building. But it does give you a different a, a different look of the phone. But it really is really rare, especially when I... If, especially the whole dial, if, if, I, if I sand it. No, I don't. I don't sand the whole thing. I'll probably... The only... The thing that I remember that I sanded down was uh, that throne that I did from that um, Thanos that I did. Mm-hmm. You guys remember that? Any of you guys? Yeah, that turned out great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I did that one uh, on the edges and on the on basically on the whole thing, the edges especially. But I sand I sanded down everything, but just to smooth it out so it could look a little bit different. Yeah, you know what? California, or not California, uh, Punker Mike's new name should be Prop 65, the California law that says when they got to put the label if it causes cancer. Could it, any, you go to Home Depot, everything has that sticker. Warning, causes cancer, <laughs> don't be around if you're pregnant, all that stuff. That's Prop 65. Well, dude, that one, like, Cupcake Wars or some shit, those guys build structures out of that shit. And this guy, like, he'll get a bunch of, like, the two-by-two two sheets. He'll glue, like, 20 of them together and start hacking at them with a the saw. And he'll have a big old fucking, uh, like, not just, like, I have the hand one where it's just, like, a square like that. This fool's got, like, the belt sander just fucking ripping on it. He's, like, covered in dust, dude. <laughs> so I was all, yo, and this guy's, like, building shit where people eat off of. So I was like, I don't yeah, know, maybe it's that bad. Well, that guy's dead, dead now. <laughs> 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 Oh. And do they actually eat it, or is it just for the competition? No, they eat the foam, dude. That shit's bomb. No, <laughs> no, it's no. like they'll build a structure. They'll build like a structure and like put like the cupcakes on it into it, like right. someone wants like a but, display. But that's for those competition things, right? Fuck, I don't know. Ask Bree. She watches that show, not me. I just glimpsed. Um, I seen, ooh, pink so you foam. didn't even watch the whole show. I was like, ooh, pink foam. Yeah, you just seen was, the I dude just, doing it. Yeah, I didn't see him like in the respirator after the show. 
in the, yeah. in the emergency You probably room. missed the big old warning. Like, warning, this foam has been no known to cause cancer. Do not attempt at home. And then you just cut the next scene. Like, I'm going to do that shit. Well, if I still had a shot vac, I would, like, tape the shot vac nozzle to the sander so it would just scoop it all up. The, um, the company but you that... don't. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm not going to go buy another shot bag. Maybe on Black <laughs> Friday when you can get one for, like, cheap. But, yeah, I, ain't, I ain't forking out that money, bro. It's, that's figure money. There's, I know that there's uh, they make craft foam. I mean, obviously, it's probably going to be a lot more expensive. But because uh, I was watching um, Adam Savage. Um, he does a lot of uh, videos, like, um, you know, stuff that he builds. And um, he buys uh, oh, yeah. foam from a craft store. And I imagine that stuff is a lot more precise. You know, it's not it's all warped and everything because it's not used for construction. It's actually used for art projects. So um, you guys might, might want to check around just to see, you know, if it's something real precise that you want to do and uh, it's worth the extra cost. I want to see if there's a, a, a nice art supply store. You know, L.A. has that kind of stuff up here. It's a lot harder to find stuff like that. It's like yeah. Cut. Um, I was going to say, have you, have you ever made anything uh, clean, uh, Henry? Like, um, like, it doesn't have any weathering or anything? Like a... The sci-fi ones that I've made, they all been clean. I don't do any weathering to those. Yeah, and there was that one the Halo one that looked really cool. Yeah, I made that one. That that one was um, there was nothing broken on that one. <laughs> there wasn't any weathering on that one either. Also, I did a uh, like a parking lot structure that I did. That yeah, one, that. it didn't have any any weathering or anything like that. And uh, what else? That's one thing that Bob the was saying is he wished that more people would do clean stuff like that. Because not everything has to be weathered. Yeah, I saw I saw that one too. That he was saying that. But like like right now I'm working on um I'm I'm finishing up um I destroyed a bar. So, uh, he might not like he might not like that one either. <laughs> but uh, who was saying it? I think it was Al was saying it. That, well, the the uh, the clients requesting it. Yeah. Not that, uh, oh, I'm gonna mm -hmm. do a, a new bar, you know, because I've done it before. But yeah, this one's completely destroyed. But I, there's um, the paint is like chipping off the floors. But um, that's what they want, you know. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Yeah, you can't argue with the customer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool. I'm about to um. I don't, I'm, I'm gonna start sealing it. I'll probably do it tomorrow at the sealer. Probably ship it by Tuesday or something. Nice. Yeah, all of you guys, uh, I already have my ticket for uh, Civil War. How about you guys? When when is that oh, coming yeah. out? Thursday night. Thursday. Yeah, I'll probably see it like that following Monday or Tuesday. I'll probably see it on Thursday. On Thursday, yeah. Night. Yeah, I gotta stay ahead of jackasses like Michael Wisman who wants to uh, spoil everything. Right after Todd says that. Spoiler. Todd's like, yeah. I hate spoilers, and then Wisman tags uh, Todd in it. Yeah. I had to, uh, <laughs> my I had to, my um, picture um, goes to a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I po okay, here's the story. I posted one GIF from a trailer, and Todd was like, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you posted something else, too, and I had to unfollow you. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just the one GIF. Well, no, and a picture of... Uh, well, okay. It was, well, the two things were from the same trailer anyways. Yeah, well, for someone who doesn't watch trailers, I don't want to see any of that shit. Oh, you don't watch them, right? I've already seen it. No. No, it's bad enough that I already... It's 
bad enough that I've already seen uh, that that Spider-Man with the shield like a million times because everybody was sharing the hell out of it. I don't know why. Uh, just... Really, people? Really? Yeah, they did it. They, they killed it with that one. Everywhere. It was everywhere. <laughs> that was one thing that I miss about the days before the internet. It's like if you wanted to see, if you wanted to find something out, you had to seek it out. You know, you had to buy like Premiere magazine, or uh, you had to go to the movie theater and watch the trailer. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you had to actively spoil it for yourself if you wanted to. Is like there wasn't, you know, people just spoiling stuff randomly. You know, like poor Punker Mike, you know, just watching something on YouTube and then got. Episode seven spoiled. That's <laughs> so you got to be careful. If not, like, uh, oh, well, what are you supposed to do? Just completely be off, stay off the internet. That's yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> yes. like, like when uh, the walking is <laughs> on, I won't go on Facebook, on Instagram, or anything like that. Because uh, sometimes I'll watch it uh, like on Tuesday or something. If I don't have time to watch it on Sunday. I'll go ahead and watch it on uh, on Tuesday, or even on Sunday, the next Sunday. So I'll just stay off the internet. And if I go on the internet, I'll be like, all right, I'm ready to see anything, you know? Cause <laughs> yeah, but it shouldn't be that way. It's like y you shouldn't have to be afraid to drive down the freeway because there's so many drunk drivers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's everybody what it's like. should be able to. It's like. Yeah, exactly. I, I have to curb my good behavior because there's so many assholes on the, you know, yeah. online. That's right. Welcome to the real world. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's drunk out there. Yeah, some people do it even. Yeah, we're like, all drunk yeah. out here. <laughs> Next time I'm, I'm, I'm bringing uh, bags of wheat to sprinkle all over your house. No. Wheat? <laughs> oh. They said weed. <laughs> weed. <laughs> now weed he can handle, but bread he can't handle. Oh, that's yeah. just fucked up. <laughs> foul. See? Oh yeah. See? Technical. Now, 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 technical now foul. Dang. Now it's, Todd went now, dark. now it's not cool to be a dick, is it? Dang. Todd went dark on that one. Yeah, I came to the internet to have fun, Todd, and you ruined it. <laughs> Yeah, now you, now you see. Now you see what what, what it's like. Todd, Todd um, laughed when Macaulay Culkin got killed by those bees on My Girl. He's like, how oh, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even I didn't see that. Dude, we were just talking about, like, uh, my wife and I were just talking about that movie the other day, and she, I had never seen it either, and she's like, oh, my God, it's the saddest movie ever. And I was like, it can't be that sad. And then he got attacked by the bees. I was like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Henry, um, I know it's getting pretty late, so uh, thanks for staying up with us. For sure, man, anytime. It was it was good kicking it with you guys. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping, uh, hoping next time I'm in L.A. I can uh, meet up with you guys at Frankenstein's. That would be awesome. Yeah, you should definitely come through. Trust me, you're gonna you're gonna like it. You, you're not gonna want to go back. I'm moving to LA. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, uh, Al Chang is supposed to be moving um, there before the year is out, so uh, that gives us even more reason to hang out. Damn, it's gonna be happening down here. This is the place to be. Yeah. yeah last time it was like 11, 12 of us over there. I was like, nice. The whole crew was over there. I'm going to try to make it down to Frankincense, I think, next weekend. Uh, I'll, I'll hit you guys up through the, the California page if some of you guys want to meet up. Yeah, I'm down. I think it's next weekend. I don't know. Is it next weekend or the weekend after? I don't remember. But I got, like, a bunch of days off coming up. So I'll hit you guys up if some people want to meet down and grab some food or just kick it at Frankincense or something. Yeah, I'm make down. Sure you, make sure you bring your diode to trade for some figures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what, though? You know what? Start off easy. Just start bringing brick walls, because if you come with the heat right away, they're going to expect it every time. So you start them easy on the brick walls and work your way up. Well, this time I'm going to bring that fucking uh, 
I'm gonna see if I can get rid of that Hulkbuster. I still have. I got that. I won that in the World Championship tournament, and I never put it together. I don't want it. I'll do some real trade it for something. I'll, I'll start off with that. Yeah, because shipping on yeah, that. For sure, man. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I'm not gonna sell that like through online or like through somebody. I'll just try to like trade it. Trading so much easier. Just be like, yo, I'll give you this for that. Like when I had those wrestling figures, they're so easy. I was like, yo. Figure for figure, and then he's just like, uh, and I was like, look it up on eBay, bro. This is worth like ten dollars more. <laughs> no deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Henry, thanks so much for coming on. For sure, guys. It was good kicking it. All right, have a good night. All right. Later. Guys, have a good night, and I'll see you guys later on. Wait. On. Until next time, triple C you later. <laughs> All right, fellas. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Peace, man. Later.